available, um, but the synthesis can also be increased in infection. So, collectins, and the phycolins are similar, which are found in the mucosa and also in the serum. And this is what they look like. So this is one of the examples. This is the mannose binding lectin. And it's called a collectin because at one end it has a collagen helix, which is where the coal comes from here. And at the other end, it has lectin domains. And what a lectin is is a protein that likes to bind carbohydrate. So it's got six of these carbohydrate recognition codes. Okay. So how do these function? Well, the cells on their surface have, are, are covered with carbohydrate, and these uh, carbohydrate binding regions will bind those carbohydrates. And it turns out that, um, and so uh, these things will bind the microbial carbohydrates, and it turns out that they do that selectively, not because our cells don't make the same carbohydrates, but we make less of them. And so the density of carbohydrate uh, that these can bind on the surface of the mammalian cells is too low for this to get sufficient affinity to bind. But on microbial cells, it's much denser. The six heads can engage, and so uh, these can bind. And when this does bind, what it does is to mark the microbes for destruction. So um, it's the first detection of this. And what it does is, first of all, opsonize it. And I'm going to tell you what that is in a minute. And some of these um, collectins can also activate and recruit the complement system. Now, these are important. It turns out that um, about 4% of humans lack nanos binding lectin. And they are at increased uh, risk of infections. And so it is clear that this is biologically important, and if you knock this out of animals, you're getting trouble. So I mentioned one of the functions is to opsonize the particle. Opsonize comes from the Greek word opsin, which means to prepare food. It basically uh, is used in this context to say that it's making the food, the microbes here, more appetizing. So it's like putting some spice on it so that the immune system is going to want to eat it. And molecularly, what this is doing is putting molecular handles onto the microbe to facilitate the eating cells, the phagocytes, to be able to grab these and eat them. And we're going to talk more about that later. So I mentioned the second thing that can be engaged as complement. Um, and I mentioned that the collectins can uh, activate complement. So it turns out that the complement uh, pathway, which is a series of preformed proteins that are present in your serum, uh, can be activated when they see a collectin bound to a pathogen surface. That's one of the three important triggers. Uh, this pathway can also be triggered when antibodies bound to something, or actually um, by the microbial surface itself. These are a series of proteases that get activated that lead to the activation of some structural components. It's a fairly complex pathway. I assume most of you know about it. So I'm not going to go into um, the detail of this, other than to say that as a consequence of activating these innate uh, preformed uh, serum proteins, a number of things happen. It puts the handles on the pathogen so that they're easier to eat. Uh, it also can directly kill the pathogen by putting, forming pores in the membrane. And also, some of the fragments that are generated are pro-inflammatory. And they're going to send out the signal for more guys to come in and help with the problem. So the key points here is, first of all, that inflammation is a response of vascularized tissue to injury and infection. In this process, the vasodilation that's occurring will increase blood flow and will cause the redness of the <coughs> This leads to increase, this vasodilation leads to increased pressure and also uh, gaps in the endothelium that leads to fluid leak, causing swelling. And what this is doing functionally from an immunological perspective is to deliver the soluble innate defenses, collectin, complement, and other, to the site of where the problem is. Okay. So now what I'd like to turn to are the cellular events that are occurring in the inflammation. And what this is going to do is to call in the cellular troops, the cellular reinforcements. And so in the 
have the enemy coming into the tissue. You've got some cells of the innate immune system that are resident in the tissue, and they recognize that there's a problem. They begin to engage it. And the other thing that they do is to call for help, because there's not enough of them to deal with this problem. And they need recruitment, they need uh, help. And the signal that they send out when they get on the telephone here um, is the production of various cytokines that will then orchestrate the uh, uh, events. So cytokines like tumor necrosis factor can be in the blood. Okay, so the battle has been started. The local defenders have recognized this. Where are they going to get the cellular reinforcements for, from? And showing this little video to emphasize that within a vascular lumen, where these cells are going to be circulating, these cells are under high pressure. Uh, they don't normally stick to the vessel walls or in the laminar flow. And so the system has had to design ways of getting the cellular defenders to stop the site of inflammation and get out. And so we're going to talk about that. And we've seen some of this from these movies, from the sort of experiments that Julius Kohnheim and the others did. So what they saw was there was vasodilation, and then what you saw in the movie is that some of the leukocytes began to roll on the surface of the endothelium. That's a process we call uh, margination. They then arrested, and they then came out of the tissue, which is a process that we call biophysis. Now, if you actually go back and read uh, the work of Kohnheim from the 1800s, which I actually have done, um, it's remarkable that as he discussed this, one of the things that he said here is that we have to deal here, that we have to adhere to deal with the molecular change of vessel walls comprised under the notion and name of inflammation. It's remarkable to me that, that uh, at this point in time, uh, the folks were actually talking about molecular changes in the endothelium, right? Turns out he was correct. So this event, these events of rolling in the vessel wall um, and arresting is all mediated by the endothelium. I'm going to show you a little experiment here where we're looking down in a culture dish. You can see these little cells in the background. Those are all cultured endothelium. And what's going to be done in this culture plate is the fluid is going to be, um, uh, there's going to be a flow of fluid over the endothelium. And in that fluid is going to be some leukocytes, some white blood cells. And we're going to see this initially for some um, unstimulated normal endothelium. You're going to see the leukocytes just whizzing by, just going by very quickly. And then we're going to see what happens if we take some endothelium that has seen some of these inflammatory mediators. In this particular case, the human necrosis factor. So these little cells are all going by. There's no real sticking here. And that's what normally happens. Now we've switched to some uh, endothelium that's been stimulated with TNF. You can see some of the leukocytes sticking and rolling. So the endothelium has become sticky. You see there's a higher power in there. You see some of these are pushed along, just like we saw in the vessel wall. And some of them, uh, like maybe here, uh, maybe here, have actually arrested. <coughs> So, what's going on uh, here in this little cartoon is that some inflammation has occurred. Some of the local defenders have recognized there's a problem. They've made cytokines. The cytokines in the local area will act on the local blood vessels and activate the endothelium. And the endothelium will now express some adhesion molecules, some molecular glue. And the leukocytes that are going by have counter receptors for these. And the first ones that get involved are selectins. These are proteins that bind carbohydrates. And they begin to engage the leukocyte, which will slow it down. But they're fairly weak um, anchors. They're fairly weak interactions. And so they stick, but the blood flow is strong enough that it breaks the molecular interaction. So the cells actually roll, but this slows them down. And then uh, what happens is there's some other adhesion molecules the, the, for immigrants, which are a much stronger protein-protein interaction. Um, leukocytes have these. They get activated by some of the hematines, some of the pro-inflammatory mediators like interleukin-8. Um, and when these get expressed, 
and contact their live man. This is a very strong adhesion. This arrests them and allows them to then use their molecular motors to, to crawl through uh, to the tissue space. Okay, so great. We've got a problem. We've got the defenders coming by. We've got them stop and come out in the tissue. But the problem might not be right next to the endothelium. Those leukocytes need to know where to go to find the problema. So how do they do that? And that's a process called chemotaxis. So if, if you think about a situation where there's going to be inflammation, uh, there may be an infection. If there's an infection, there will be bacterial products produced. There may be tissue injury. There may be blood clotting. Uh, complement may get activated. So if these things are getting engaged at the site where the microbe is, these are going to diffuse away. The highest concentration will be where the problem is. And as you get further away, the concentration is less. And it turns out that the leukocytes can sniff out this difference in concentration uh, by the difference in engagement of the uh, receptors on the front half versus the back half of the leukocyte. And they'll follow this to higher concentration. This is actually quite remarkable. And I'm going to show you a little video here of chemotaxis. So this is a granulocyte, one of the white cells. This is a pipette pit that has some serum in it, which is clotted blood, contains inflammatory factors. And we'll see what happens here. It's following the tip. Get the tip here. The cell tries to follow it there. And so it's sniffing the molecular gradient that's coming from here. And that's exactly what's happening in the tip. So the key point here is that when there's a site of a problem, an infection, inflammatory mediators get generated, and complement from some of the resident uh, leukocytes that are there, they will activate the endothelium to express adhesion molecules, which are the selectins and integrins, and their ligands. The adhesion molecules and chemokines then attract and arrest the leukocytes exactly where you want them, where the site of the problem is. And then the leukocytes migrate into the tissue and follow the gradient of chemotractins to the site of the problem. Okay, so we've got the cells to the site where the infection is. What do the recruited cells do? And also the resonance cells that are there. So we have some bacteria, some cell debris that's here. Here comes one of the leukocytes, um, a macrophage. And what's going to try and do is to ingest and then kill these bacteria. So I want to talk a little bit about this process, what goes on there. So in order to ingest these microbes, it actually has to contact them and they need to attach. And that can occur simply by interactions with the membrane or with receptors on the membrane. And um, some of those receptors are for some of these molecular handles that the innate immune system will put on for collectins or complement or antibodies. So this gives a much tighter grip. And why this is important is that some bacteria have evolved mechanisms to try and avoid getting eaten. It's not in the bacteria's interest most times um, to get eaten. And so what we're going to see here, this is a leukocyte. These are some bacteria that have a, poly a, a, a polysaccharide capsule. You can see a little halo around it. And the leukocyte can smell it. It's going after it. Um, but it's not able to, to grab onto it because this capsule is very slippery. And so in this situation, it's really essential that the uh, microbe get opsonized. Um, and in fact, in patients that have defects in the molecules that opsonize, actually get into trouble with these kinds of organs. Okay, so once it's actually found it, it can engulf it. And what it will do is to begin to flow its membrane around the microbe and bring it in into a vacuole called a phagosome. And so um, this process, uh, I want to show you some videos of what this actually looks like. So we're going to see some rabbit leukocytes that are going to be engulfing some yeast cell wall. That's the yeast cell wall. Here comes the granulocyte. Attachment begins to flow its membrane around and brings this in. You can begin to see here some of the little granules here. I don't know if you saw them. They actually pop. 
some actually bring in pretty big things. Now, here are a couple of yeast particles. Uh, these are chicken leukocytes. They have very large granules. And what you're going to see is that some of these granules begin to fuse with the vacuole, even before.